Yeah, it's cool to get that perspective, but I know you want different perspectives. Because it's not on the required reading list, you know what I mean? So it's like, if I, it's not going to be on the required reading list. I don't feel like I'm the first person to hear about this, this, this subject matter or, or seek out the answers. I feel like it's a reason why certain things are on that list, you know what I'm saying, and certain things are not. So it's like, I just don't want to waste no time. Like, I guess I'm just anxious to put the books down on the reading list, like, because I feel like they're going to... Push a, push a like, Western, a Western, basically, yeah. basically, yeah. it's hard for you to articulate because I feel like I'm not really used to the knowledge on, on, on what is good to, by the state of doing, in the narrative about the problem. Basically, it's self-fulfilling prophecy. Huh. Uh, I've been forgetting, uh, bro's name, but he was a, uh, he, he, I think he was a doctor. He got his doctorate, uh, and then he was teaching like philosophy. Uh, so, Chancellor Williams, I think. Chancellor Williams? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if I read any Chancellor Williams yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if I read any Chancellor Williams yet. Yeah, that's not like, like pretty good. Dude. What did you write about? Uh, just like African philosophy, especially in like America. Do I need help with this stuff? Especially in like America, because he's African, he's basically African American. I think he was born, not when he was born, but it's just like within the last, it's just like within the last century, you know, like, so it's like something that's kind of relevant and relative, I would say. But, but he, he made the book, uh, Destruction of Black Civilization, I should have known. A black, a black civilization. Yeah. We probably got that around here somewhere. We got another one too. I think I'm gonna probably stick with the with the encyclopedia because it's like it's pretty good. It's pretty good like diversity, like from different authors and stuff. If you look them up, like they have different qualifications and stuff like that. But yeah. Even now, like I think I want to just sort of like. Drop a pin, like a bookmark, in some of these books and come back to them after I get my like, liberation theory. I feel like liberation theory is, is sort of like sort of important when thinking, when when being like confronted with a with, with a colonizer. You know what I'm saying? Like the colonizer is the one that has the answers that you're looking for, and they're the only ones that wrote about it. Like you gotta know how to deal with a colonizer. You know what I'm saying? Like when they colonize, like I don't know if my liberation theory is kind of like intact. So you're trying to say taking advice from the person you took? Like it's like taking it's like taking advice from some a thief or something? Well like okay like so if this person who's writing on on in a particular stage of African development or African philosophy or something like that, right? Like, it's just that depending on your proximity to that to those occurrences, it'll be very difficult to find like uh, a, a culturally relevant like analysis on that, you know, like, yeah. not one that's not one that's sort of a colonizing figure or coming from a colonize a, a place of colonizers rather than a place of indigenous. You know what I'm saying? Like political thought. Yeah. So it's like I'm not saying that there's not agency for any particular colonizer to want to do something positive or do something to help the liberation, but it's like at the same time like there's still a product of, of that colonizing like machine or school of thought like you know what I'm saying? It's the formal or formality and stuff, that's what you're trying to say? It's like, no, no, it's, like, it's, like if a, it's like if a basketball player go play for the Lakers, you know what I'm saying? Like they're gonna still be a Laker, you know what I'm saying? Like at the end of the day, they're gonna be compared to other Lakers. They're gonna be like, a pro like they're gonna be like beneficiaries of the reputation of being a Laker. You know what I'm saying? Like that market and shit like that. So it's just like you would. It's like that versus N one. Like you wouldn't. It's like I guess you could compare like sort of street ballers or something like that. But it's like a certain level of like a certain level of like or like a certain click basically of basketball. Basketball marketing, you know what I'm saying? Like the basketball business. You know what I'm saying? Like if your friend from your neighborhood went and played for the Lakers, like that'd, that'd be big. Whereas if you went and played for 21 other 
teams, like it'll, it'll be maybe equally as big depending on who they are. But at the same time, it's like there's a particular thing about the Lakers like in terms of basketball like that is it's, it's like reminiscent. So like with with the idea of like uh, philosophy and like big business and shit like that, like these, these universities and shit, they were like the sponsors for a lot of these like things that was going on. It would be like the church and the schools that was offering the grants to people to go colonize and explore shit and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? They were doing it from the schools. So like these, these major universities, like when they when they got a teacher that's work that's doing their doctorate work there, you know what I'm saying? That's also teaching there, but they're also working on their doctorate. Like all that shit that they're producing, like their their literature that they're producing is being used to basically determine what people are gonna do in business like today. Mm-hmm. Like, like, did you, did like, you say churches are like that too? Yeah, churches churches are like that too. Because, they like, write papers and shit like that too. I, like, I would kind of relate to what you're saying, like people stuck in this formality. I mean, we're in 2018, that's based off of Jesus' death, right? I mean, 2013? 2018, we're in 2018 right now. Right now. Yeah. But it, it's, based, it's the Bulgarian calendar. The Bulgarian, the Justinians, you talking about the Jew, Jew, uh, Jewish, Jewish season, you made it out of something? It's like the, um, so far, I do my Yeah, sorry, we want to do that. Yeah, but, uh, you said the Gregorian calendar? The Gregorian calendar is... But it's based on Jesus' death. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they have other calendars too, like the Mayan calendar and Buddhist calendar, you know? Based on the problem. Yeah. Exactly. What I'm trying to say is like you've yeah. been into this formality of uh, the 2018 Christmas, how you know, like with this calendar. The Gorgarian calendar. Everybody yeah, I think 99.9% of the world. You said Gorgarian is like the the Gregorian Christians. They're like the the not not the Bolsheviks, but the but the the Byzantine, the Byzantine, Byzantine? Yeah. yeah, they're like a certain, they're like a certain clique right. of, um, of Romans, of Roman Catholic, you feel me, that revived the Roman Catholic after it fell after Jesus. So it's, like, it's like the first Roman Catholic that was for Jesus, you feel me, but like, so they lived after the Roman Catholic uh, Empire, or the Roman Empire, but after the Roman Catholic. You know what I'm saying? During the Roman Catholic, like they were part of the Roman Catholic Church, but they were not a part of Rome proper. They were the Byzantine. You know I mean? So it's like a certain like state, but it was post Rome that in, that incorporated Roman Catholic Church. Mm-hmm. And so like they were probably the first like government to actually propagate like this. I mean, there was a lot of people that were illiterate. That's why. Pro Jesus. But like, I think it would be because like, but. Because I'm saying a lot of people are living with the churches and the cheap, like, the churches is bringing people in just because of how it looks, you know. Uh, like some people just walk into the church and like, oh, I just want to visit this place because it looks cool. Uh, I'm going to be here every day because it looks cool, you know. And then they try to learn stuff from there. I mean, probably just like, you know, it's like, you know, us, us back in the Rome, uh, age, I say, Rome Catholic. Like Jesus was an outlaw. Jesus was killed by the Roman, the Roman like judiciary. He went to trial and he got executed by the Roman courts. You know? So basically, after the Roman, it's argued that Jesus is the reason that Rome did. Like he was preaching the shit that. That, that took to the street and that caused Rome to fall. You know what I'm saying? And so other states will remain Catholic or will begin to be Catholic and then will birth the Catholic Church. Basically, like the, the followers of Jesus, like the like he, like his disciples, and then like the first the first like people who was like following him and things like that different church. But at first, like the Catholic Church wasn't around. Well, it's argued that it wasn't around. When Jesus, like, after, it, was, it wasn't made to like after Jesus died, like when Peter became like a prophet. Like, you know what I mean? like, he became a prophet. That, oh, like, like they were still outlawed in Rome. So while they were outlawed, they were still outlawed in that in that period. You know what I'm saying?
in her, even though they believe what they believe, and that would be it would become like indigenous to Rome, the Roman Catholic Church. At that time that it was occurring, they were outlaws by the law. So, and you're saying people just gravitate towards it. Like I think I think that's probably what would cause like the fall of Rome because it seemed like if you're familiar with Jesus, like he was clicked up with like Egypt. Like his parents was like familiar with Egypt. Like when they got in trouble or felt like they was gonna kill their son, they ran to Egypt, you feel me? And like that's it seemed like different than what was going on in Rome. But at the same time, Rome they have Alexandria in Egypt. You know? So they had a they had a satellite out there. But other people had satellites too. It was different cities like Cairo. You know what I'm saying? And it was all it was popping in different spots and it was open. It wasn't just like it wasn't just like uh, monolithic. The Byzantine sort of sort of sort of champion that Rome shit, but post Rome, post Rome proper, it was like Catholic. There was the first there was the first knights and shit like that of the Catholic Church. You know what I'm saying? Like the first kings that was made that went to go conquer shit, like we're gonna conquer in the name of Jesus. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like the Justinians in the Byzantine era. But basically, they're not like Persians or nothing. they just from the same place as Romans, but they just after Rome fell. So it's like, they took it back, basically. 